This movement is essential for ballroom dancers, especially competitors, and kinesthesiologists also consider it really essential just for safety, for non-dancers, for preventing ankle injury, for preventing knee pain, arthritis, all sorts of benefits. Um, and what we're going to talk about today, I'm also going to give you three super easy ways to max yours and make you the best dancer you can be. Um, and so that movement is called dorsiflexion, not plantar flexion. These can be confused. So let me show you the difference first of all. So here we have um, a Latin shoe, okay, for dancing. Um, so plantar flexion is when we can lift from the toe and the ball of the foot. So very common in every single ballroom and Latin figure. Dorsiflexion is when we bend from the ankle. Plantar flexion, dorsiflexion, okay? And your average person has about 45 degrees of the dorsiflexion. Um, and here's the problem, folks. Um, it requires exponentially more than that to be a highly skilled ballroom dancer, okay? Um, not so much for the Latin. However, I highly recommend um, implementing these things as a Latin dancer because you wear those super high heels and that tends to make your dors dorsiflexion even worse, okay? because um, you're not using the heels at all. At least the ballroom dancers are doing that. And this does naturally degrade with age. Here is the good news, guys. If you implement these following things, not only can you maintain it, you can improve it um, and get back to that super high level, regardless of how old you are, okay, guys? Um, okay, so um, I'm gonna cut to um, a separate video, first of all, to show you some shoes super cheap available online and how they're going to help you. I'll be right back. Okay, number one recommendation. I have talked about toe shoes in the past videos, um, which are great if you have bunions or bunionettes that you're dealing with. Um, but if that's not an issue for you, I also recommend when you're not in your dance lessons, wearing jazz shoes. So these have a split sole. So if you look from the side, if you want to zoom in here, there's a little bit of a gap there in those rubber soles. So this shoe provides ample support while allowing you that foot inflection because this actually requires your body to do it. Okay, so this is my body doing it whereas if i have that really like thick black soled shoe most street shoes have very firm shoes for foot stability but guess what that's because most people aren't dancers the shoe company is compensating for that for these people unfortunately that feeds into that problem of a lack of flexibility and foot strength so as dancers, I highly recommend wearing jazz shoes during the day. They're not so good if you're a distance runner, but most dancers don't combine running as part of their fitness regimes too hard on their body. Um, so again, jazz shoes, you can get these super cheap online. Um, sometimes your local dance supplier will carry these too. I do not recommend practicing in these though. Um, it's, it, this is in practice, go ahead and wear those suede soles um, for actually representing what you're gonna do on that comp floor. Now, by the time your dorsiflexion range falls to 34%, you are, catch this guys, five times more likely to twist your ankle um, this is a problem. <laughs> um, so again, if you invest in, in those jazz shoes, super helpful. Okay. My next suggestion 
super easy to do, takes literally less than a minute. Do it one thing in the morning, one thing at night. You can do it at home. You can do it in the dance studio. Heck, do it on the side of your office. Super easy. I'm going to cut to an easy, quick stretch. I'll be right back. The first stretch we are going to demonstrate today is the knee to wall stretch. Um, if you did track like I did, I was a sprinter, I was a long jumper. Um, our coaches um, called it the Achilles stretch. So it, you might be familiar with this already. So what we're going to do guys, start very gentle. We're just gonna go just a few inches away from the wall with our toes, okay? And then we're gonna slowly bend down till your knees touch the wall. Now with, and you want to hold this for 30 seconds, okay? Now with time, we're gonna scooch our feet farther and farther away from the wall as you develop that stretch and that control of the coordination and the muscles and the ankles. Um, but if you bend and then your heel comes up, that's too far, okay? Also, even if this hurts, I scooch closer. We just start wherever it's comfortable. If you need to almost be touching the wall to have it not hurt or have your heel bent, that's totally fine. We just don't want to see pain, and we don't want to see any sort of toe action. The heel must be on the floor to get the most out of that stretch. Be very patient. A year from now, you will be crazy flexible and not even realize there was a problem to begin with. Okay. Okay, friends. One more super easy quick stretch to totally take your dorsiflexion next level. Here you go. The second stretch that's going to be very helpful is the chair stretch. Now I'm gonna show on this little tiny chair today, but at home, I highly recommend using like a big fat heavy ottoman. I'm just gonna film in the studio today because it's gonna be distracting in my living room. And I want you to clearly visualize how we're gonna do this. But a big sturdy chair is gonna give you a lot more flexibility and be safer than this little one, okay? So we are gonna put our hands on the back side of your chair, okay? We are going to put one leg at a time on top of your chair so you're nice and stable, okay? So here. Now we're gonna slowly bend forward with our knees without lifting the heels, okay? Do not do it to the point that it hurts. Don't do it to the point that you don't have the flexibility anymore. Your key is, are my heels touching the ground? And guys, I highly recommend, regardless of age, you try this now. Um, I find that many people are so like insistent. Oh, my foot control is great. My feet are so strong. Yes, you have feet as strong as an ox, but that is totally irrelevant if you lack that flexibility. You can't do it and you will get end up with foot flop that looks like this. Or heaven forbid, flat feet. And as I always say, it's always best to consult a doctor. Um, if you can't afford that, at least a personal trainer so they can set you on a personalized path to fitness and wellness. Because um, this is ultimately only a YouTube video and I'm not a doctor um, and I don't know you. They can actually give you a customized, personalized um, 
plan of attack for you to make you your best. But hopefully this has been super helpful. Um, and if you do improve your dorsal flexion, you are going to see amazing results in your ballroom dancing. So I hope that's been interesting today, guys. I look forward to seeing you first thing in the morning. Um, if you like all things ballroom dance, hey, make sure to hit that subscribe button. I post daily videos on cultural stuff, on dance tips, um, and we are a worldwide community of ballroom dancers here. I'm sharing just my personal experience from 40 years in this industry as a newcomer, amateur, all the way through pro, championship level competitor, dance studio owner, dance teacher, but you know what? I am but one person. So we are a world of ballroom dancers. If you have something you'd like to add, um, something that I missed in this video, hey, comment below, because I'm always trying to condense 10 hours of information into a five minute uh, nutshell. <laughs> so guys, thanks for joining me. I look forward to seeing you first thing in the morning. <gasps> Happy dancing.